Hi friends, today I'm going to introduce you guys with some basic concepts of dental anatomy. So let's get started. Now humans have two sets of teeth in their lifetime. The first set of teeth to be seen in the mouth is the primary or the deciduous dentition, which begins to form prenatally at about 14 weeks in utero and is completed postnatally at about three years of age. The first teeth in the dentition begin to appear at the mean age of six months and the last one emerges somewhere between the age of 24 to 32 months. The deciduous dentition remains intact until the child is about six years of age. At around six years of age, the first excedinous or the permanent teeth begin to emerge in the mouth. The emergence of these teeth begins the transition or the mixed dentition period in which there is a mixture of residuous and succedinous teeth present. The transition period lasts for about 6 to 12 years of age and ends when all the deciduous teeth have been shed. At that time, the permanent dentition period begins. Now there are some tooth numbering systems used for ease. Three of them are the Universal System, Palmer System, and the FTI System. The Universal System of Notation for the primary dentition uses uppercase letters for each of the primary tooth. Letters A, B, C, D, E for right maxillary teeth, and letters F, G, H, I, J for left maxillary teeth. Letters K, L, M, and O for left mandibular teeth, and letters P, Q, R, S, T for right mandibular teeth. Similarly, for permanent dentition, this system uses numbers 1 to 8 for right maxillary teeth and numbers 9 to 16 for left maxillary teeth, numbers 17 to 24 for left mandibular teeth and numbers 25 to 32 for the right mandibular teeth. Next one is the Palmer system in which the arches are divided into quadrants and each tooth is given a specific letter and number, despite of the side and jaw it is in. For example, in the deciduous dentition, central incisors are designated as A, lateral incisors as B, canines as C, first molars as D, and second molars as E, irrespective of whether it is maxillary or mandibular or on left side or on the right side of the jaw. Next one is a two-digit system proposed by FDI that has been adopted by the World Health Organization and accepted by the other organizations too. In this system, the first digit indicates the quadrant, 1 to 4 for the permanent dentition and 5 to 8 for the primary dentition. The second digit indicates the tooth within a quadrant, 1 to 8 for the permanent teeth and 1 to 5 for the primary teeth. For example, the permanent upper right central incisor is 1-1. One, one. Now let's go to the anatomy of the tooth. Now this portion of the tooth that you can see in your mouth is called the crown and this portion that is embedded in your bone and covered by your gums is called the root. Both of them are separated by this line known as cemento enamel junction or the cervical line. Now why is this called the cemento enamel junction? Because this crown portion has its outer layer made of enamel which is the hardest part of the body and the outermost layer of the root is made of cementum. Hence its name is cemento enamel junction. Now the second layer is the dentine that forms the bulk of the tooth. Inside it is the pulp chamber and the pulp canal, which normally contains the pulp tissue. The pulp chamber is mostly in the crown portion and the pulp canal is in the root. The spaces are continuous with each other and are spoken of collectively as the pulp cavity. It contains all the blood and the nerve supply of the tooth. And here is the bone holding the root firmly and it is called the alveolar bone. Now the tooth surfaces, they are named according to their positions and uses. 
In the incisors and canines, the surface towards the lip are called the labial surfaces and in premolars and molars, those facing the cheek are called the buccal surfaces. When labial and buccal surfaces are referred to as collectively, they are called the facial surfaces. Now all the surfaces facing toward the tongue are called the lingual surfaces. The surfaces of premolars and molars that come in contact with the teeth of the opposite jaw during the act of closure are called the occlusal surfaces. And these are incisal surfaces with respect to incisors and canines. The surfaces of the teeth facing toward the adjoining tooth in the same dental arch are called the proximal surfaces. These proximal surfaces that are faced toward the median line are called the mesial surfaces and those most distant from the median line are called the distal surfaces. Now let's go through some of the other landmarks of the tooth. A cusp is an elevation or mount on the crown portion of the tooth like these. A tubercle is a smaller elevation on some portion of the crown produced by an extra formation of enamel. A cingulum is a lingual lobe of an anterior tooth. It makes up the bulk of the cervical third of the lingual surface. Now what's a ridge? It is a linear elevation on the surface of a tooth and is named according to its location. For example, if it is on the buccal surface of the tooth, that is the surface pointing toward the cheek, it is known as buccal ridge. If it is on the incisal surface, it is the incisal ridge. And if it is on the margin of the tooth, it is called the marginal ridge. Now marginal ridges are the rounded borders of enamel that form the mesial and distal margins of the occlusal surfaces of premolars and molars, as well as the mesial and distal margins of the lingual surfaces of incisors and canines. Triangular ridges descend from the tips of the cusps of molars and premolars towards the central part of the occlusal surfaces. Now, when a buccal and a lingual triangular ridge join, they form a transverse ridge. The oblique ridge is a ridge crossing obliquely the occlusal surfaces of maxillary molars and formed by the union of triangular ridge of distobuccal cusp and the distal cusp ridge of mesiolingual cusp. Now let's talk about some grooves. A developmental groove is a shallow groove or a line between the primary parts of crown or root. As you can see here, this is the main developmental groove here. A supplemental groove is less distinct than the developmental groove and is also a shallow linear depression on the surface of tooth, but it is supplemental to a developmental groove. Like here, you can see it is a supplemental groove. The buccal and lingual grooves are the developmental grooves found on the buccal and lingual surfaces of posterior teeth. Pits are small pinpoint depressions located at the junction of the developmental grooves and at the terminal of these grooves, like here, here. These points, these pinpoints are known as occlusal pits. A lobe is one of the primary sections of formation in the development of crown. Cusps and mammalians are representative of these lobes. Now a mammalian is any one of these three round protuberances found on the incisal ridges of newly erupted incisor teeth. While they are generally considered to be a feature of only permanent incisors, but mammalian-like serrations may also be found on newly erupted primary incisors. Always remember, you can see them only in the newly erupted incisors. Now let's talk about line angles. A line angle is formed by the junction of two surfaces and derives its name from the combination of those two surfaces that join. Now for anterior teeth, there are six line angles. Now this is the mesial side, labial side, distal side, 
and lingual side. So the line angles formed here will be mesolabial, distolabial, linguodistal, mesiolingual, labio incisor, and lingua incisor. Similarly, for the posterior teeth, there are eight line angles mesiobuccal, distobuccal, distolingual, mesiolingual. Buccal occlusal, disto occlusal, lingual occlusal, and meso occlusal. Now, like line angles, a point angle is formed by the junction of three surfaces. The point angles also derive its name from the combination of the names of the surfaces forming it. Now, for both interior and posterior teeth, there are four point angles. For anterior teeth, there is mesiolabio incisal, mesiolingual incisal, distolabio incisal, and distolingual incisal. And for posterior teeth, there is mesiobuccal occlusal, mesiolingual occlusal, distobuccal occlusal and this to lingual occlusion. That was all for today guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and share my video and subscribe my channel.